Welcome to LabMist.com in the lab video series on Cisco FivePower 7.0 VPN. This is Metha, your instructor for this video series. For a complete list of FivePower videos, you can visit our website under the security section. There you can also sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we are going to look at how we can use the FMC to create site-to-site -site IPsec VPN between FivePower devices that we have in our lab using the pre-share key. Let's take a look at our lab setup. We have three five power devices in our lab here. The HQ Firewall 1, and the one for BR1, and the one for BR2 located at three different sites. Right? The HQ is our headquarter, and then BR1 and BR2 are our branch remote sites. All of these devices are currently registered to the FMC sitting at the headquarter at the IP address 172.16.32.107 which is our server VLAN, VLAN32, that same subnet. We have a Windows 2019 domain controller, DNS server, and certificate authority server at the IP of dot 40. All these are connected to our core switch for our lab, switch number one. What we are trying to do here is to establish some site-to-site -site IPsec VPN to test connectivity from branch number one. We have our Windows 10 test machine, Windows 10 test one, right? that we can do some connectivity checking on and for the branch number two, we're just going to use the SVI located on our branch switch. And that SVI has its own uh, VRF, right, BR2, because we are kind of reusing or repurposing the same switch for our BR2 site. We are going to start with a simple point-to-point -point VPN. Here we have the first remote site, which is the branch number one with the local five power device and a local subnet of 172.18.1.0 slash 24, and that's on VLAN 101 on the switch. Our assumption here is that our remote site needs to have access to the resources at our headquarters, specifically the server subnet, which is VLAN 32. 32.0 slash 24. So we want to provide connectivity from 172.18.1 to 172.16.32. Just like any other IPsec VPN configuration, the configuration kind of begins with the IKE policy or IKE policy. So right nowadays, right, if your devices, and I would assume that most of your, if not all your devices support IKE v2, then that's what you should use, the IKE v2. Right? There's no reason to use IKE v1 anymore because it's a less secure protocol. If you are unfamiliar with IKE v2 or want a quick refresher, you can check out a video, SEC0251, Introduction to IKE v2, as part of our Flex VPN video series available on our website. There's a couple of prerequisites I want to point out. Let me bring up the web interface to the FMC. The first thing that you might want to check, if you have never configured the IPsec or site to site VPN before on the FMC, is that if you plan to use strong encryption, which is pretty much anything right, stronger than DES or DES, make sure that your FMC has an export control feature enabled. Otherwise, the deployment is going to fail. And the way to check on that is to go under settings and smart licenses. And there is an option right there for export control features. Make sure that is enabled. And the way to get this enabled is usually you will have, if you remember when you need to create the registration key on your smart account and then provide that to the FMC, as you create that key, there's a pop-up and there's a checkbox to enable export control. Make sure you have that checkbox checked. Because if it's not checked, this guy's gonna say disable, then you're gonna to have to come in here, either enable it or you have to kind of re-register your FMC to the smart account. Okay, but other than this, there's no additional licenses or subscriptions that you need to bring up site to site IPsec VPN. That's pretty much the only prerequisites that I can think of. Then we can proceed to the object configuration because we need to configure the Ike policy. This is located under the VPN, which is in the bottom left corner, kind of tucked away there click on IKE v2 policy. 